What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-ons video. So in today's video, we're gonna check out 10 of the best add-ons for architectural modeling inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I will add links to all of these add-ons in the notes below the video. But we're gonna start off by checking out an add-on that allows us to bring in perspective matched images that we can model from in Blender. So FSpy is an add-on that allows you to bring in an image and then set up the perspective lines inside of that image so that you can model from them very quickly in Blender. And so what this does when you set up these perspective lines is it's setting up all your different vanishing points and then it's gonna create an image um, that's aligned with those vanishing points inside of Blender. And so what that means is that means when you get this all set up, you can just import this and start modeling from it. And so when you import this in Blender, what it's going to do is it's going to bring in this perspective matched image. You can use the perspective match image as a guide for your modeling. So then you can use this to rough out the size of your building, as well as adding things like details for the different windows and doors and other things like that. This is especially helpful if you're modeling quick context models, or if you're just trying to get the proportions of something right inside of Blender really quickly. So OpenStreetMap for Blender is an add-on that you can use in order to quickly select a location, import it, and then create a city based on that location. So what it does is it uses OpenStreetMap data in order to import data for buildings, to create buildings in 3D, as well as things like roads and um, sidewalks, other things like that based on this data as well. So when you import this, um, there's a free and a paid version. So the free version will just bring the buildings in with no textures. Um, the paid version will bring in buildings with textures. However, note that those buildings aren't gonna be textured accurately using images from the real world but more as like placeholder textures, but it definitely does make your cities look better. So if you are looking to quickly create cities inside of Blender, this is a great add-on to do that. All right, so Align Tools is a free add-on for Blender that lets you align things inside of your models. So let's say, for example, that I had multiple different models like this and I wanted to quickly align them. Well, what this tool does is it's gonna allow you to align things like rotation, scale, or location. So in this case, let's say I wanted to align this along the Y axis, I would click on this button right here. If I wanted to align these along the X axis, you would select a, a base or an active object and then you would select the others and you would click on the location right here. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna align all of those different objects. And so that can be really helpful because not only can it align along one axis, you can align it along multiple axes. So let's just say I wanted these all on the same plane I could come in here and I could align their Z location and they're on the same plane. If I wanted them lined up, then I could align them along the X axis. But then in addition, you can also align the scale of objects. So if you have objects that have been scaled to different sizes like this, you could pick one like this one right here, for example, and then select the others and click on the button for align scale. And in this case, we would click on Align Scale for All. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna scale those to the same size. So there's other more advanced tools in here as well. But if you wanna do any kind of alignment, this can be really helpful. All right, so one of the places where you can waste a lot of time in Blender is re-navigating over and over again to find different camera views. So there's an add-on for stored views, which is built into Blender. So you can find it just by looking for 3D view stored views and you can enable that and what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to save different views inside of your model so if I was to click on initialize right here what this is going to do is this is going to allow me to pick a spot or a location like this one for example and click on first off I'm going to go to camera to view what that's going to do is that's going to create a camera with my current view so let's say I wanted this to be kind of an elevation type view what I could do is I could navigate to this location click on the button for save current and so notice how what that does is that saves my different views. Well, then I can jump back and forth between them just by clicking on them right here. So you can use this to save your different views so you're not navigating back to those locations over and over again. And it also really helps you manage your cameras in here as well. All right, so this next one is interesting because it's less of an add-on and more of a custom build of Blender. And what it is is basically a build of Blender that's built on um, Python. And what it does is it allows you to quickly bring in customizable walls and other things like that. So what you can do is these are all kind of live and you can adjust them. You can adjust their settings and everything else live inside of your models. So this is probably the best implementation of something of the style that I've seen. I really feel like it's kind of the, uh, I think it's the future 
of architectural style modeling in Blender because what it does is it allows you to just drag and drop these things in and then adjust them. So there's not a whole lot of messing around with all the custom modeling, but instead it almost feels more like a tool that you're supposed to use in order to model buildings. So super excited to see this in the future. You can download a free version of this right now to give it a try, which I will link to in the notes down below. All right, so one of the things that can be a little bit difficult if you've switched to Blender from another program is it's just a little bit different in the way that things move around, right? So for example, in like a CAD program or like SketchUp, what you would do to move an object is you would set a base point and then you would click again in order to move an object. Where in Blender, what you do instead is you just tap a key and then you just move things until you click again. Now you can use things like the snapping and other things like that, but it's just disconcerting if you've come from another software. There's a tool you can download called CAD Transform. And what that does is that brings back some of those CAD functions. So um, it's a free download. Um, you can definitely name a fair price though and donate a little bit to the developer. So if you do decide that you like this, you might want to do that. But what you can do is this tool, for example, if I activate the move tool, notice what this is going to do is this is going to bring in a snap point right here. If I was to select this point right here, move my mouse, and then click again, you can see how what that's done is that's allowed me to move my object here. And so you can also set this so that it snaps to different things. So for example, I could set this so that it snaps to vertices. I could set it so that it snaps to faces, um, other things like that. Or I could do a shift click in order to snap to multiple different things. But then if I use this tool, it's going to give me options like snapping to edges, snapping to midpoints, other things like that. But then there's other functions in here too, like things like rotational tools, where you can set a base point, click again, and then you can set the way an object rotates. So what this does is this really kind of gets you back to that CAD functionality. Then there's some other cool like buried functions in here. So for example, um, they don't talk about it much, but there's a tool in here where you can move an object. So if I click and then move my mouse like this, if I tap the up arrow key, what that's going to do is that's going to create an array of objects between those different points. So you can use this to quickly create things like arrays as well. So definitely worth a look. Um, it's definitely worth checking out to see if it fits inside of your workflow. So when you're doing architectural modeling, a lot of the time you need to be able to show different dimensions to show exactly what size different things are going to be. So there's a built-in tool called Measure It Tools um, that you can enable just by going in here and just searching for Measure It right here and enabling that. What that's going to do is that's going to pop up a window over here on the right hand side under your view functions that you can use in order to show dimensions. So you can see how, for example, I've already got some dimensions in here, but this allows me to measure different things inside of Blender. So let's say, for example, that I had an edge over here that I wanted to show the length for. So something like, let's go with this one right here. Well, what I could do is I could go into that add measures and I could click on the option for segment. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna add a measurement of that segment inside my viewport. So you can use this to display different measurements in here. So you can also adjust the styles of these measurements. So for example, if I wanted this to be a different color, I could just come in here and I could adjust that so that it's dark, so that it's light, whatever you want it to be. So um, you can also use this to use measurements for things like faces to see those or to add different labels as well. So let's say for example that I wanted to add a note about this vertex. I could click on label and what that's going to do is that's going to give me an option down below. And then whatever I type in here is going to be labeled inside of my model. So I can use this to add notes, I can use it to add dimensions, other things like that. All right, so another great tool that's built into Blender is the ant landscape function. So to find that, what you want to do is you want to come in here and you want to type in the word landscape. That's going to find the add mesh ANT landscape tool and you want to enable that. What that's going to do is that's going to add this tool as a mesh option inside of Blender. So if I do a shift A mesh, you can see how there's now an option in here for landscape. And what that's going to do is that's going to give me options for different kinds of landscapes in here. So you can set this to be like billowing ground. You can set it so that it has like canyons, other things like that really quickly in Blender. You can also adjust things like your different heights. So this is going to adjust as you go. So you can set like how steep things are and other things like that. Um, there's actually a lot of control of the way things do like fall offs and other things inside of Blender. So there's a ton of presets, but then there's also a bunch of functions in here to make different things. So if I was to select the river option, 
for example, you can see how this is going to give me a terrain in here with a water plane. So what the water plane is going to do is that's going to act as water wherever it intersects with your model. So what this does is this allows you to add quick random landscapes into your models without you having to go in and do all that noise work yourself. So this next add-on is designed to add some more CAD style tool sets to Blender. So this one in particular comes with a tool set for things like line drawing, snapping, as well as um, other things like construction lines, for example. So you can create guides inside of Blender that don't actually interact with your geometry um, so that you can mark like you know, locations of windows and other things like that. And so this has the ability to add those construction lines and it also has the ability to do line drawing in here and one of the things that I really like as someone who also uses SketchUp is it gives you the option to split faces up with edges. So if you're used to that more like SketchUp style editing where you're going in and editing the faces um, with different points and lines and things like that, this is really going to kind of add that functionality in. So this add-on is available for $7 inside of Blender and it just kind of again ma makes it adds some of those more precision style tools um, that you would use for architectural type modeling. So I will link to that in the notes down below and you can check it out. All right, so finally, there are a couple built-in add-ons for Blender for creating things like walls and other things like that. So if you go to Edit, Preferences, and inside of your add-ons, you look for ArchiMesh and ArchiPack. Those are both built in to Blender. So there are free versions of both of those. There's also a pro version of Archipack, which offers more features. But basically what these tools do is they add objects inside of Blender that allow you to create things like walls and windows, other things like that. So Archipack, for example, is gonna give you the ability to add walls, which you can then come in and adjust the length of the different wall segments, as well as adding different segments to them. So you can make your walls kind of turn corners or create those more complex shapes in a very precise sort of way. So not only can you create walls, but um, Archipack also has built-in windows, which are automatically going to place on the walls and cut openings. So um, that's gonna be really helpful for adding things like those different windows. Um, and then Archimesh, is going to have, and Archipack has some functions for this too, it's gonna to have some tools for building things like cabinets. So what it does is it allows you to customize things like widths and lengths and other things like that. And so it's a little different than what I showed you earlier with Home Builder. Um, I think Home Builder is probably a little bit more easy to use, but um, you're gonna have the ability to customize those things. And then Archipack has tools like tools for creating different roofs and other things as well. So it's really kind of automating that wall, um, door, window, um, roof creation process. So this can be a very powerful tool for creating architectural style models inside of Blender. All right, so I have a link to all of these add-ons in the notes down below, as well as some videos on this page. I'm um, getting more in-depth on a couple of these as well, but leave a comment below. Let me know if your favorite one made the list, or if you th think there's something that should be added on here. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.